Good day, everyone. I'm Yongjie, and these are my group members, Yin Liang, Kui Zhao, Yoshini, and Bobby. Today, we'd like to present about the treatment of palm oil wastewaters, and this video is brought to you by Group 1B. Palm oil is one of the main drivers of Malaysian economy, and it contributes a lot to the Malaysian gross domestic product, especially in the agriculture sector. The demand for palm oil plantations have been increasing rapidly to meet the growing populations of the global. You might not wonder that palm oil is all around our daily life, like the detergent we use to wash our clothes, the cosmetic that we use to make up, and many other palm products involve the use of palm oil as shown in the figure here. This is the flow diagram of how crude palm oil is extracted from the fresh fruit branches, and we could see that it involves a lot of processes from the sterilization process until the crude palm oil being extracted. It is undeniable that waste products will be produced throughout the process, and according to Hassan, an estimated of 30 million tons of palm oil waste are produced annually from more than 300 oil mills in Malaysia. Palm oil waste can be divided into two categories, which include palm oil mill effluent and palm oil refinery effluent. Palm oil mill effluent, or the other word palm, is the largest source of pollution, and in this video, we are elaborating on how to treat palm by using ponding system. Palm is mainly produced in three processes, which are through sterilization process, clarification stages, and hydrocyclone washing in the mill. There are several existing technologies to treat the palm, such as biological treatment, thermochemical treatment, and etc. But in this video, we are focusing on the ponding system. Ponding system is the most widely used treatment system, and it involves several processes, such as anaerobic decomposition, hydrolysis process, and etc. The hydraulic retention time of the whole cycle took around 75 to 120 days, depending on the palm size. The main purpose of the treatment process is to lower down physiochemical characteristics of the untreated palm to meet the standards of the DOE of Malaysia to protect human health and ecosystem. Ponding system is widely used in Malaysia due to several advantages it exhibit. It is inexpensive and easy to handle in terms of its simplicity and low operational maintenance. It is also energy efficient as no mechanical mixing and valid operation control or monitoring is required. However, it does exit several shortage of the system, such as the hydraulic retention time is long, a larger area for the pump is needed, and methane gas will be produced throughout the process, which contributes to the greenhouse effects. Hence, the problem is, palm oil is considered as a significant element for human and is widely used in our daily life. However, high production simply means highly increase in the amount of palm oil waste, which adversely affect the environmental especially water sources as large amount of water is consumed during the extraction of palm oil. Although the generated waste from palm oil extraction is non-toxic, but the waste contains a high amount of physiochemical properties such as BOD, COD, TS, which exceed the parameter limits for water cost discharge. Hence, in this project, the main objective is to study the ponding system and the treatment process involved. We are also analyzing the effectiveness of the proposed waste control system, P, PI, PD, and PID, in treating the palm wastewater and discuss the most effective control system. Last but not least, we also study the challenges to implement the proposed waste control system in the palm oil industry and recommendations to overcome the challenges. Now, I would like to pass the floor to Bobby to briefly discuss about the ponding system as the waste control system. Thank you, Yunjie. Now I'm going to explain in detail about how does this ponding system work. The ponding system comprises of pre-treatment as well as primary treatment. Palm oil mill effluent will be disposed into the cooling pond, followed by mixing, anaerobic, facultative, algae, and aeration pond. Then finally, it will be discharged. For the pre-treatment, the mixed row effluent, which is known as MRE, is pumped into the cooling and mixing ponds for stabilization before primary treatment. There is no biological treatment occurring in cooling and missing ponds. HRT for cooling and missing ponds is one day. The function of this cooling pond is to transfer heat in the cooling water to the air, while the function of missing pond is to mix all the substances and for stabilization purpose. Moving to the primary treatment, the first pond is the anaerobic pond. Anaerobic digestion is one of the most useful biological treatments for pond treatment, which gives very significant BOD reduction up to 90%. However, it has less tolerance to nitrogen, phosphorus, and pathogen number. Anaerobic ponds are usually 7 to 19 feet depth to minimize the presence of oxygen and maximizing heat retention. HRT for anaerobic pond is 45 days. There are three steps of biological conversion of organic matter, which are hydrolysis, acidogenesis, and methanogenesis. 
Furthermore, the second pond is facultative pond. In the facultative ponding system, it has three distinct layer combinations of aerobic, facultative, and anaerobic layers. At the first layer, algae use carbon dioxide, ammonia, phosphates, and sunlight for the encouragement of photosynthesis and metabolic processes, thus ultimately releasing oxygen. Meanwhile, at the second layer, the facultative bacteria tend to grow more rapidly and oxidize the organic in middle zone. At third layer, with the total absence of oxygen, the anaerobic bacteria come in contact with the settled solids and organic matter in the wastewater and consume it as food, which will then release hydrogen sulfide, carbon dioxide, and methane. Facultative ponds are usually at to 9 feet depth and the HRT is 20 days. After that, proceeding to algae pond. Algae ponds, also known as aerobic ponds, are the ponds where oxygen is present throughout the entire depth of the pond or at all the time in order to promote the photosynthesis process of the algae or microorganism. The oxygen released from the photosynthesis process is used by the bacteria to stabilize the suspended organic material in wastewater. Bacteria use the oxygen to break down organic matter into simpler compounds, then it will reduce the BOD level. Algae pond is usually 6 to 7 feet depth, which with HRT of 7 days. Moving on to the last pond, which is aerated pond. In this pond, oxygen that is provided by the aerated is added to increase the dissolved oxygen levels in the pond, thus maximize the aerobic microorganism activity. In addition, aerated pond was used to avoid a buildup of sludge and also ensure that the entire pond is in contact with the oxygen. This aerated pond is usually 6 to 20 feet depth and its HRT is only one day. After pond has gone through all those ponds, and it is now safe to be discharged. That's all from me. I will now pass the floor to Ho Ying Liang. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Bobby. So now I will talk about the analysis and discussion part. In terms of environmental control concepts, the pond system design determines the flow pattern and how water levels are controlled in the pond system. The operational strategy is all about controlling water levels in the pond system to create old water. So, old water is water that has not had substantial amounts of raw wastewater added to it or mixed with it. And in a properly designed pond system, primary and secondary ponds together should be able to store at a minimum of 180 to 210 days of wastewater between the minimum of 2 foot and maximum of 6 foot depth. To improve the efficiency of creating old water, in this case, an example of a pond system operating in series as shown in this slide, is applied. Moving forward to the process control part, water transfer between ponds through elevation difference method, as shown in this slide, will be applied. The control structure is not only used to control the water level, but also to measure flow, water depth, or as an access point for pumping, and when necessary, to add chemicals. The water level is controlled by adjusting the slide gates, valves, or similar device in the structure. So, in order to control water level, a variety of process control strategies are applied. The use of a proportional controller reduces the rise time and the steady state error as compared to the no controller use. However, there is a high overshoot settling time and steady state error present in this type of control. The addition of the integral part to the proportional part eliminates the steady state error and getting a final value near the required level compared to the pre controller but still there's a high overshoot and settling time. Next, the use of PD controller reduces the overshoot, improves the rise time and settling time. And more importantly, the steady state error present is still within the acceptable range. Lastly, the use of the PID controller has achieved the overshoot of less than 5%, settling time less than two seconds, and the desired steady state value. In short, all the results are shown in this slide. Although the PID controller has achieved the best results in terms of overshoot, settling time and offset, but due to the cost considerations, the PD controller is applied in this system. And this is further supported by referring to the experimental data. So using a PD controller is sufficient to control the water level in this case. That's all from my side. Now I will pass the flow to Kui Zhao. Now, I'm going to present about the changes to implement the proposed system in industry. First, the channel faced by pond system is the formation of scum and flour. Since the pond oil mill ethylene POME contains oil and grease, they should be removed by oil skinner in pre process. 
the structure in building oil and grease will lead to formation of scum on, on the surface of wastewater in pumping system. For the scrub, E produced as byproduct of calcification and purification procedure. Since the scrub is denser than water, this block will spread down at the bottom of the pump. Eventually, the scum and scrub will come together in, inside the pump. As a result, it will directly reduce the volumetric capacity of pump. The sprout will also reduce the hydraulic retention time, helps RT, we will decrease the efficiency of pony system. Overall, the prison of scum and scrub will decrease the problem of pony system in terms of capacity and efficiency. Next, the channel to implement PIT control in industry is the prison of noise. Noise is a random and even signal. In our control system, the noise associated with the different pressure DP across a olive plate used to infer for red. Noise can be caused by wear and tear on the sensor or some physical operation that cause the sensor to send an incorrect reading to the controller. With the prevention of noise signals, liberty action can cause the noise in the PB measurement to be reflected and amplified in the controller output signal, producing chapter in the valve. As a result, it can lead to excessive movement of the valve and eventually damage and wear the valve. Besides, noise signal will cause the derivative action to be ineffective due to elastic motion of the PID controller output. Finally, the elastic movement of PID controller output will become disturbed to other control loop. I think that is all for my presentation. I will pass the floor to you, Sunil. Here, Kuizhou. Now, let's move on to recommendation. As mentioned by Kuizhou, the major challenges in treating PONE using ponding systems are scum formation and solid sludge accumulation, as well as noise signal in PID controller. There are three economic-friendly recommendations for aforementioned challenges. The first recommendation is to remove the scum and sludge using submersible pumps or excavators, then dewater and dry them to be used as fertilizer or for other land applications. The second recommendation is to install a sludge pipe at the bottom of the digester to remove the accumulated solids. The third recommendation is the implementation of signal filtering. Typical industrial PID controllers include a filter on just the derivative term expressed as a fraction or divisor of the specified derivative time. The fraction is usually in the range of 0.1 to 0.2 of the derivative time. Based on the graph shown in the slide, a filter is able to receive a noisy signal and yield a signal with reduced random variation. An efficient filter design should be able to decrease the random variation while retaining more of the true dynamic information of the original signal. Other than pointing systems, a few alternative PONE treatments that implement process control strategies using PID controllers have been practiced and commercially available for nearly two decades. The most effective alternative is electrocoagulation. Electrocoagulation uses aluminium and iron electrodes due to their good coagulant properties. The method involved is electrolysis by oxidation and reduction, where electric current flows into an electrolyte solution. This method is preferred because the equipment is simple, requires low energy, and has built-in controllers. This method is reliable, effective, and environmental friendly as a result of no chemicals involved. Other commercially available POME treatment alternatives are addition of pectin and chitosan for organic matters removal, as well as high technology bioreactors such as membrane bioreactor. In conclusion, we have achieved the objectives of this project. The first two objectives have been achieved in which we have studied the PONE ponding system from pre-treatment stage to final discharge stage and the implementation of process control system in PONE ponding system. The second objective has also been achieved in the third objective has also been achieved in which we have identified two major challenges and respective recommendations. The major advantages of using PID controllers in ponding systems are that hydraulic retention time can be predicted and pond area affected by scum and sludge can be monitored and prevented. To conclude, ponding systems equipped with a suitable process control system and additionally with a waste to energy facility will effectively lead to zero waste POME treatment. These are the references we have referred to complete this study. That's all from us. Thank you.